Good Saturday afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Weather on the Go. All your weather coverage. We'll be giving you an update on what to expect over this weekend and into next week as we have dangerously cold temperatures and wind chills. And our next winter storm will be tracking, but this time further to the south, we'll be detailing how much snow and ice you could be seeing as we move forward. If you are new to the channel and like detailed weather breakdowns across North America, this is the channel for you. So make sure to subscribe to the channel down below. And also by helping me get to 75,000 subscribers by the end of this month, simply by subscribing to the channel and also liking the video down below, it helps out more than you know. Over the past 48 hours, the past two days here, we did have a major winter storm move across the Midwest and into the central Great Lakes. Now that storm is across eastern Canada and out of the United States for the most part. And you can see it did lay down some decent snows from eastern Nebraska through the Hawkeye State here of Iowa, northern Illinois, getting into south central Wisconsin, the UP of Michigan, and much of the state of Michigan and even parts of northwestern Indiana. Indiana, seeing some decent snows. Let's zoom in the picture and show you how much snow did fall here over the past 48 hours up toward Green Bay and down toward Milwaukee there, especially west of Milwaukee. We saw some totals over 12 inches here from the past couple of days. The western and northwestern suburbs of Chicago saw 14 inches of some snow there. The Davenport Quad Cities checking in around 15 inches and then back into southeastern Iowa around 14, 15 inches. So some decent snows over the past couple of days and that has left it very cold with that snowpack out there. Let's show you the precipitation though as we go into the evening. Notice that low pressure is moving out of the picture. We still have its effects though on the Great Lakes. We have the lake effect snows across portions of Lake Michigan there, Lake Superior and Lake Erie in vicinity. And that has actually caused the Buffalo Bills playoff game to be postponed to Monday afternoon now because of the heavy lake effect snows and the cleanup over there as we go through today and this weekend. Overnight tonight, we're still going to be seeing those lake effect snow showers continuing in full force, but look off to the west. We have another system moving in across the Rockies there into Nevada, southern Idaho, into Wyoming there, into Utah, into western portions of Colorado, bringing some moderate to heavy pockets of snow overnight tonight to the west, and that could lay down a decent snowpack across the higher elevations here, and even some of the lower elevations getting in on some snow with that cold air in place we could be seeing feet of snow right outside the Salt Lake City area in those higher elevations. Western Colorado there in the Rockies over a foot of snow. Very nice uh, one to two feet of snow out here into the Sierras as well. And then some decent snows again back into southern Idaho, Nevada, and uh, portions of Oregon as we go through your Sunday time frame. And when combining the snow with the strong winds out there, we could be seeing some blowing and drifting there in the higher elevations. But even for the lake effect snow, through Sunday, we're going to be seeing those very strong winds gusting over 50 miles per hour, especially near Lake Erie and into portions of New England. So this will be causing some travel troubles and that could be causing some moderate to major travel disruptions near the Buffalo region. Again, that's why the Bills game has been postponed to Monday. And then back to the west, again, those moderate to major, even extreme travel impacts through your Sunday time frame will be leading to some, uh, again, some slick roads out there and some snow-covered roads, especially in those higher elevations. Going through the weekend, if you walk outside right now, you can definitely feel it, and it's only going to get colder. Look at the source region for which our cold air is coming from, all the way up here into Alaska and the Arctics, and that is a floodgate of cold air moving all the way south into the central and eastern U.S. this weekend. And once it's here, it's here for a while. As we go into early next week, that's when the coldest of the air will be here. Monday, Martin Luther King Day, and on Tuesday, the day after, we could have the coldest air in a couple of years across the middle of the country. So let's show you your low temperatures as you wake up for church or just for any errands to run on your Sunday morning please bundle up outdoors. It's going to be dangerously cold. These are just your temperatures, folks. These aren't wind chills. We're waking up to 21 below there in Des Moines. 
22 below there into Omaha, 20 below in Lincoln, and 26 to 30 below zero up there into North Dakota and eastern Montana. So make sure that you are bundling up for your Sunday morning. And those wind chills are going to be bitterly cold, if not dangerously cold out there for your Sunday morning. 30 to 40 below, even some isolated 45 below zero wind chills across the north central states as we go into Sunday morning. Look at that. Even down into North Texas, the Texas Panhandle, and Southern Oklahoma, seeing single digits below zero wind chills waking up on your Sunday morning. It doesn't get much better during the afternoon with that snowpack up here across the Midwest that we did lay out with our winter storm recently. That's going to kind of create more of a refrigerator type atmosphere across portions of the Midwest, keeping those high temperatures Sunday down into the single digits, if not double digits below zero for highs. And looking at the afternoon, this is peak daytime heating folks, and we're still 20, 25, even 30 degrees below zero with our wind chills for Sunday afternoon from the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, all the way up into the Northern Plains and into the Northern Rockies. There's your wind chills Monday afternoon, Martin Luther King Day. You can see same thing, 20, 30, even 35 degrees below zero to the north. Very cold across the deep south into Texas, Louisiana there into Mississippi, Arkansas, Oklahoma. We're still seeing teens and single digits above zero for your wind chills on Monday afternoon. And then Tuesday, that's the heart of the cold here. And you can see that freezing line with our wind chills going all the way down here into the Gulf Coast. And yeah, even Panama City could be in the 30 and 40s with our wind chills by Tuesday afternoon. So it's going to be cold, that is for sure. Looking at our next winter storm moving across the country, we do have winter storm watches covering most of the state of Tennessee, northern parts of Alabama there into portions of Mississippi northeastern Louisiana, back into Arkansas and eastern Oklahoma. We have winter weather advisories all the way down into south central Texas toward the San Antonio region, Dallas, Fort Worth, and even some winter storm warnings starting to be hoisted across this region. And that is ahead of our next storm system. So as we go into tomorrow, that energy out west is going to be pushing across the Rockies, heavy snows out there as we go into Sunday. Sunday night, we start to kick off some precipitation down here across the deep south. It's all snow though with that very cold air across portions of Kentucky, western and middle Tennessee, places like Nashville, Jackson, Tennessee, down toward Memphis, Little Rock getting in on the snow as well, and then a sleet and freezing rain mixture, which could be trouble down here into portions of the I-35 corridor, Dallas-Fort Worth to Waco, all the way down towards San Antonio, Tyler, Texas, Shreveport. We could be seeing some dangerous icing as we go into Sunday night. Then as we go into Martin Luther King Day, that snowfall lifts further east, Crossville and Knoxville, Tennessee, Lexington, Kentucky, getting into portions of Southern Ohio, into portions of West Virginia and Western Virginia. As we go into Monday, we're still seeing some sleet and freezing rain mix though across Mississippi, Southern Arkansas, Northern Louisiana, and East Texas through the day on Monday. Let's look at your ice accumulation across the Pacific Northwest, a pretty surprise ice storm across this region through your Monday, Martin Luther King Day timeframe. We could be seeing right outside the Portland area, potentially up over a three quarters of an inch of ice, believe it or not. And this could really cripple travel out here. So make sure if you're traveling in and around Western Oregon that you do take it slow and really just not advising travel through your Monday with all that ice out there. Then translating that energy further east, the Rockies getting in on the heavy snows through your Tuesday time frame, And then look at the snow line going all the way south through Kansas, Oklahoma, southern Missouri, and northern Arkansas getting through much of Tennessee, Kentucky, and then winding its way in towards West Virginia through Tuesday. And this could be a narrow swath, but a potent swath of snow. This could lay down enough snow for you to shovel and snow blow further to the south there. And then south from there, we're going to have the cold air still in place, but enough warm air to where we'll start to see more icing across south central Texas, getting through Louisiana and the Dixie Alley region, and zooming it in to show how much how much ice we could be seeing through Tuesday, San Antonio to Waco, just north and west of Houston. We could be seeing a 10th, maybe two tenths of an inch of ice. That is definitely enough to cause some trouble out here. And then through Baton Rouge, Lafayette, getting in towards the Jackson, Mississippi region. We could start to see maybe up to a quarter of an inch of ice at most as we go through your Tuesday timeframe. So make sure to stay updated on the forecast down there. 
as we go forward. Then as we go into Tuesday, this is the 16th of January, that snow system will move up into interior New England. It'll be snowing across the Appalachians into the Poconos here into northern and eastern portions of Pennsylvania through much of New York, especially the heavier snows into upstate New York there, getting into Vermont, New Hampshire, much of Massachusetts, especially western and central Massachusetts and then moving into western Maine there on Tuesday. And zooming it in, the rain snow line, again, it's been like this all season so far, and it looks to ch not change much in the way of where that rain snow line will be setting up. Boston to Hartford, down through New York City, Trenton, and then down toward Philadelphia, Baltimore. That's pretty much where that rain snow line will be setting up with this system as we go into that Tuesday time frame. So putting that together, snowfall accumulation, a few inches, potentially several inches, the snow from Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, back into New York State and northern PA here Tuesday into Wednesday. May need our shovels and snow blowers yet again. Further south, we got that shallow cold air, but enough warm air. Our water temperatures in the western Atlantic are still above normal for this time of year. So there we go. We got icing from Boston through Hartford, northern Rhode Island, and then getting toward New York City there, northern New Jersey, and then back into southeastern Pennsylvania there. And then eventually into Maryland, we have more of that tenth to two tenths of an inch of ice. And there could be isolated pockets here that could get a quarter of an inch of ice Tuesday into that Wednesday time frame. But if you're looking for winter to end or at least a nice warming trend, this could be your friend as we go into later January, the 21st through the 27th time frame, roughly the last week of the month. There is likely to be a much more of a January thaw across the West, and then that will translate eastward into the Midwest and really the Northeastern United States through that end of January time frame. But we'll start to see that subtropical jet re-energize and we'll see more southern stream storms across the south, starting in California and Nevada, going through the Four Corners region, and really starting to see above average precip for New Mexico, Texas, Oklahoma, southern Kansas, Arkansas, Louisiana, and to western Mississippi, and then below normal precip across the northern tier and the northeastern tier of the United States, taking on, again, that much more El Nino look toward late January. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel down below for detailed weather breakdowns across North America. And I will keep you updated with these updates at times moving forward. Make sure to like the video down below, especially if you did like today's weather forecast. Share this video with friends, family, and on social media. And I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of their weekend out there.